Right, 17 April 2024, and today I am excited to give you the morning update of all the important news that is taking place around Zimbabwe. And this is the place that you come if you want to get an understanding of what's going on around the country. Gambakwe Media doing very, very well, and one of the top media houses in Zimbabwe. So let's get started, and let's get started with what's happening in the Zimbabwe military. So, as you know, there has been massive changes at the top in the Zimbabwe military. And these changes have been continuing. Yesterday, there was yet another change at Imbizo Barracks, where the commander there was moved. So, there was Colonel uh, Osi Olimandu. She was replaced uh, by Colonel Colin Ngobe. And this change came as a surprise, uh, because these are continuing changes. And no one knows the bigger picture, what is happening with all these military changes. So I'm going to play for you the explanation that was given by uh, the top, top, two men, top men in the Zimbabwe Defense Forces and the Zimbabwe Army, National Army. So he explained that these changes are normal. But I want to unpack this for you. Let's go into his speech. I want to take you into the speech that he gave. Uh, General Anselm Sanyatwe. So he's going to be speaking when he was speaking during that handover takeover ceremony. So let's listen to what he said. It is standard practice in the Zimbabwe National Army for commanders to be moved from one appointment to the other in line with the overall staff requirements obtaining in the Zimbabwe National Army. This system of management helps to develop officers into versatile and all round leaders capable of handling the overchanging demands of the military profession right so he is saying that this is standard practice in the zimbabwe national army that the commanders are moved around like that but i do not agree this is very uncommon and this is very unusual what is happening in the zimbabwe national army however i believe that the zimbabwe national army is actually one of the most reputable organizations left right now in zimbabwe in the government, the Zimbabwe National Army, these are the guys that we can trust. I, I believe that we can trust the guys in the Zimbabwe National Army. So they are very, they're trying their best. <laughs> I cannot say they're very professional, but I can say they're trying their best. The junior soldiers are trying their best under the most difficult uh, circumstances. And in terms of the way that our army is looking, uh, the soldiers, you can see that their uniforms are in good condition. I can, I, they're not in a bad state like they were during Gavis days. And the, the soldiers are staying away from politics. So that is what I like. Uh, most of the soldiers are staying away from politics. And the current commanders that we have, I think if they continue on the route that they've taken of professionalization, then the Zimbabwe National Army is eventually going to be away from politics and they're not going to be part of the problems going forward. We currently have problems, especially in politics, with the dynasty so the formation of a dynasty the mixing of a family with the national politics that is where we have a problem now and we obviously have to deal with that situation uh in zimbabwe that is where we have a problem now things are not functioning in zimbabwe because the country is not being personalized so let's see how the army deals with this because those are the situations where you need the national army but to say that it's common practice to make all these changes uh, around the country so you remember there was a change in Masingo, a change in Gweru, changes in Harare. Now we have this change in Imbizo. We've also had over 20 changes at a very senior level, including last week, I showed you the seven generals uh, that were retired. So there were seven generals retired last week. And the question is, who is behind these changes? Is Mnangagwa behind the changes? Or is the military acting on its own? So it's very important for us to understand what is going on and I will replay this video for you as I exit uh, later on. Now, let's quickly run through the other, uh, the other news so that I can get a chance to go and work out and, and uh, do my gymming here in the morning. Uh, let's start with SADAC. Uh, so SADAC is uh, secretary or executive secretary is in the United States of America. Zimbabwe has boycotted the meeting with SADAC in the United States. So I want to show you who attended. So Zimbabwe did not attend that meeting. I do not understand why they did not attend. So all the other ambassadors attended. 
So you can see that uh, the ambassadors that attended here uh, include Namibia, uh, Malawi, Lesotho, so Mauritius, Mozambique, South Africa, and, the, and Tanzania, Eswatini, Republic of Congo, and Angola, they all attended. But our ambassador from Zimbabwe did not attend this meeting. Uh, this is all the ambassadors in Washington. So you know that there is a report currently at SADC that says the election in Zimbabwe was rigged. So I do not know if this is the reason, but he did not attend. Uh, Mahosi was over there. You can see Mahosi is sitting there, and uh, there are more pictures. You can go to the SADC website. Uh, these guys are doing a great job. Uh, he's going all over the place, meeting people. And uh, there is the ambassador to Malawi there. And I, I, I think that's another ambassador there. But our Zimbabwean ambassador is not there in this meeting, which was held by other SADC ambassadors. So I do not know what that means and what is the implication of that. Then let's go to the story of uh, Felistas Murata. So Felistas Murata's daughter, Felicia, she had the pictures leaked, and the young man that leaked those pictures is Amir Maka. So Amir Maka uh, is from Budiriro, and I have a feeling that is related to uh, the other Maka. So you know this Maka that was hanging out on Apokelo and Ginimbi, that is Maka there. Uh, that is Pokelo there. That is <laughs> Jekingarande. And that is Jinimbi. That was the famous Cape Town uh, boat cruise that they took. So Amir Maka, I suspect that she is linked. Uh, that is linked to uh, Maka. So we, we need to confirm that because he appears to be com co connected. He has been released on $50 bail after leaking those pictures. But according to the H Metro newspaper, uh, my titi, who is a Felicitas, is accusing Patricia Jack, and Patricia Jack is this woman here, of leaking the pictures. So she's saying that the pictures were actually leaked by Patricia Jack, and Patricia Jack leaked the pictures and demanded 5,000 US dollars. That is what she's saying. And when she didn't respond, the same person gave her a call saying that she was going to leak the pictures. And then after about an hour, she got a call from Zodom Kandla. Uh, that is all my titi. She says she got a call from Zodom Kandla that the pictures were already online. But uh, ourselves as a media house, we did not get those pictures from, um, from a person. These pictures were leaked on a public platform. And I think I've given the people who, who need to know the location of those pictures, where they were leaked. So we have provided them with the link so that they can deal with it. But I don't know if she is the one that linked or that, that leaked those pictures. Patricia Jack, according to my TT, she is saying that is the person that leaked the pictures. Then I want to quickly move to other stories. Uh, so the my TT story is in court. Uh, what happened is that the young man Amir is being accused of leaking the pictures after uh, Felicia, Felicia moved on very quickly to another boy called Charles Nyahoko. So you'll find that information in the H Metro newspaper, and that is available today. H Metro newspaper guy is doing very, very well. And I want to see what the Zimbabwe All Media uh, Survey says about who is who in the news zoo in Zimbabwe, who is the top. Uh, they tend to say a lot of things, <laughs> but I know who is in top right, on top right now. The news media has shifted. So let's see what they say. I will look for that report of the Zimbabwe All Media Survey, which was out yesterday. Now let's quickly look to new ambassador appointments. Uh, there were new ambassadors appointed this week, and I forgot to mention it. I was particularly interested in uh, this lady here, uh, Stella Ngomo. She is the ZITF deputy CEO. She's been appointed the ambassador to India. Very well, uh, well done. It's a, it's a good appointment. I, I like the way she connects with people. Then we've got Ambassador uh, Abigail Shonua, who has been put into China. And Utaunashe over there. So let me remove the banner so that you can see. Uh, Utaunashe and Ambassador Jonathan Utaunashe is going to be the ambassador to the United Nations for Zimbabwe. Then we've got um, these other two. So that is Stella Nkoma there on the left, India, and Ambassador Tawonga Mushayavan. This guy is going to go to Saudi Arabia. So that is the people that are going to be amb uh, appointed as amb ambassadors. Some of the appointments are actually good. I like some of the ambassadors. I interact with some of them. Uh, here and there in private. So let's talk to other people. Uh, Miss, Miss Zimbabwe. I want to go to Miss Zimbabwe. 
right now miss first of zimbabwe miss first of zimbabwe has been appointed or she has been announced last week so it's this young lady here she's also miss uz 2023 uh what is her name uh, let's find the name because I, Karen Katsande, right? I, I can't believe that I no longer know the name of beautiful ladies. I'm old now. That is why I don't know the name of beautiful ladies. Karen Katsande is Miss Face of Zimbabwe and Miss User 2023. So she's going to be representing Zimbabwe. You can go and look at that story in the Newsday newspaper. If, if I'm not mistaken, it's Newsday. Or maybe you can look at H Metro. I don't know where, where they've carried this. Then, in terms of the army uniforms, the, the police uniforms, the police have issued a statement and you can look at the story here from the police. They are saying that it's a lie, uh, that there are no uniforms and that the police are playing politics. Uh, the junior police officers are playing politics. That is what they're saying. They're saying there's nothing wrong in the Zimbabwe National Army. So in the Zimbabwe police, everything's fine. I do not agree. I showed you last week the uniforms of the uh, Zimbabwe prison service without being asked and without connecting this story at all. The uniforms in the police look very, very bad. So this is uh, the normal police that you see in court, right? This guy, that's a male uniform and uh, on the left is the female uniform. And, and that is Amir Makade. I, I wanted to display that picture for you before. You can clearly see that this uniform can last a very long time. If you see that uniform being torn, it means the police officer has gone for months without a uniform. I challenge these guys in the Zimbabwe government to walk into police stations and to walk into the Zimbabwe prison service and see how people are dressed. The belts that they're wearing, the state of their shirts, it's not looking good. And Adam Nangagba, they must be ashamed of themselves. Uh, so, and I'm not about they are destroying everything. And I'm not about our rival in Zara. I'm not about other more officers to be a, a laughing stock in, in front of people, and they are shameless. Now, uh, when they are told to fix these things, they don't fix. Uh, that is the legacy of Mnangagwa and these people. Uh, very, very embarrassing. <laughs> very, very embarrassing. I don't even want to keep going because I, I, I'll, I'll blow up. Uh, it's embarrassing how adults. In Zimbabwe, been reduced to to paupers. Uh, a person who goes to work, they can barely afford bread. They can barely afford transport, and there is no pension coming. So basically, people are moving around like zombies in the cities because Mnangagwa has mismanaged everything, and right now is in the process of destroying the currency uh, as we speak. Uh, you see what I posted last night, and. This is going to get worse. Uh, these guys, they need to be checked. And they're not being checked right now. Uh, and the dynasty. So let's go to the next uh, story, which is the army <laughs> again. So the guys in the National Army have done it again. Uh, the guys, uh, four soldiers, are among nine suspects who were involved in the robbery. So the four so soldiers are namely Corporal Owen Bai, Sergeant Promise Musa, Sergeant Farai Chauke, and Corporal Simbarashe, Mavuze, Vajure, 33. So 33, 38, 37, and 36. Young soldiers are being reduced to having to steal, uh, to, to make a living. And this is all because of ED. ED is must manage everything and doesn't listen to people when they're telling him, Kuti, have dialogue. The secret to Zimbabwe is dialogue. People need to talk so that this situation can end. The situation is unbearable to everyone. And you can see these young guys, they are robbing with uh, these fake pistols. Look at the guns on the floor. Uh, I hope that will get a, big, a bigger and better uh, pistol. They, they are robbing with these old rusty pieces of, of guns from the 1960s. These are not uh, serious, serious thieves. These guys are desperate for food. <laughs> they are desperate for something to eat and they are doing everything to, to try to survive. The Zimbabwe government is a mess and they, are, they don't listen to any advice at all. So let now uh, bring this to an end. I want to bring this to an end and I want to look at uh, Passion Jawa and um, uh, Chiangwa. So yesterday, they were out and about town. 
uh, and the guy on the left needs to start working out now <laughs> because he used to be very strong. I don't know what has happened. So Java and uh, is going to be running a, a function in Harare. So I'm not sure what it is. I don't talk to Java, but I, I, I used to talk to him long back. So he is obviously in Zimbabwe for this function. And I think Java is a nice guy. I don't know why he's mixed up with the Zanopiv guys, but he's a nice guy. So let, let's see how it goes. He's been doing very well when he runs events in Harare. And I don't know if these events are linked to Zanopiv. But what I know is that Java is a very nice guy. If you listen to Java and they're talking to him, you, you gain a lot of understanding. Now let's go to the comments before I play for you again that last video which we had. Um, Thomas, Thomas says, morning, Gambakwe. Uh, and Ngoma Brian, good morning to you. Ngoma Chicho, good morning to you. And uh, let's look at if there's another comment. Ngoma Jonathan says, I think the shipping officers has been done by ED to take away officers who are a threat aligned to the Chuenga faction. Uh, so let's unpack who is Anselm Sanyatwe. Anselm Sanyatwe is a Chuenga guy. <laughs> that is what you need to know. He's a Chuenga guy because he is, uh, if, if you look at the United States reports in, in 2019, he was accused of being part of the first August shootings. He was the commander during that time. So he is a, a Chuenga guy and he's not an ED guy. ED does not have anyone in the army that you, you think he has. Uh, ED has got his other plans, but not those guys. So my thinking is that eventually ED and the army are going to clash because ED is not doing anything national. He's doing something for his family. ED is building a dynasty and Auxilia is becoming a problem. So I've talked to many guys in the military and Auxilia is becoming a problem. She is starting to try to push a sons forward. And this is where everything is going to fall apart. There is no one in the military who is going to allow it uh, for, for General Chwenga not to get into office. So if you think that General Chwenga is just going to sit and not go and become president, I think again, this is where you need to watch. But remember what I've been saying about the third force. The third force is a structure. So the third force is structured. They've got a plan, they've got a strategy. The question is, is does Chwenga have a plan? And can Chwenga outmaneuver these guys? Because Chwenga will not be allowed to take over without a fight. So he's going to have to fight. And that fight means he must already know where his enemies are, where they are moving to, when they're going to move. And that is very, very difficult to understand because the third force is a structure that you cannot describe. I've been describing to you the third force that it was going to take out Chamisa. Chamisa is out. Then now they're going to the next place, which is to take out General Chwenga. Then they'll take out Mnangagwa. So if before they take out Mnangagwa, they will take out General Chwenga. This is my belief, and this is how I believe it's going to move. If the third force is going to go in, then they will have to take out Chwenga first. Then they go and take out Mnangagwa. That's how I think this is going to move. Then let's look at Mkoma. Uh, I saw your comment here about... Uh, Mkoma Chakura says, Pablo, I don't agree with you most of the time, but on ZRB informs, <laughs> let's do something. Yes, I, I, I'm embarrassed by Zimbabwe. Uh, when I walk into Zimbabwe, I am very, very embarrassed. Uh, the soldiers at the borders, if you go to Forbes border, I walk to the guys. So every time I go to the, the borders, I walk to the soldiers and I chat with them a little bit. I went to the guys at Forbes border. They are sleeping in little tents. The women are sharing small tents with the guys and they've got nowhere to sit, they've got nowhere to cook, they've got nothing to eat. Uh, I have to bring water sometimes and I, I go over there to just hand it over. So I bring like 30 bottles of water and as I walk or, or drive past, none of the soldiers have got water, none of them have got anything to eat and you can clearly see that they're all suffering, uh, sitting in little chairs. A soldier does not have respect at the border, a police does not have respect at the border. And a police does not have respect in the cities. They live like uh, the lowest and lowest people in the society. And this goes to all the people in the government. Mnangaba, I do not know what he's doing, uh, going around pretending to be opening big projects when he cannot fix the basic things in government. And worse, he's destroying the currency. Uh, that is crazy. I've never seen someone like Mnangaba who is destroying the currency. 
when he's being told by people like Professor Mgan, could if you want your currency to work, use that currency only and don't put it and say 50% tax in US dollar, 50% in this and that, fuel in US dollar and this other thing and this and that. This thing is going to crash and people are going to suffer. So Nagaba needs to be stopped right now. He needs to be stopped. Uh, his behavior is becoming wayward and it's becoming worse. And then come on, he says, don't underestimate ED. Yes, I agree. I do not underestimate ED at all. But ED's days are over. ED is no longer in the equation. The people that are in the equation, it's the third force and it's Wenga. And then Chamisa is popular, but I do not think that he's going to be able to outmaneuver the military guys. So eventually they'll have to take each other out first before you have the, uh, the, the Chamisa era. So you're going to have the two, two main factions of Zanpiv, which is the dynasty versus the third force versus Chuenga. So they, in fact, there are three, uh, uh, three groups here. So it's the dynasty, they've got their own plan. The third force have got their own plan. And then uh, the Chuenga faction is going to have its own plan. And obviously the dynasty is sitting with Mnangawa. Uh, so it's going to be very, very interesting. And, and I hope that... Uh, Everything is clarified. <laughs> Mr. Strong Ziggy. Yes, Mnangagwa Arguraeva Nenzara and Mnangagwa is not finishing his projects. If Mnangagwa starts a project, you can be guaranteed that that project will not be finished. Uh, right now, it's a big construction site in Zimbabwe. Contractors from as far as 2019 are not paid for the projects. Nothing is going to finish and it's all going to be a big mess. The next guy who's coming, we have to construct again. From scratch, the Ziggy will collapse to a billion. This is the next thing that is going to happen. You can watch it and you'll be watching it here. So let's bring this to an end. Let's go and play that very video that we started with. There was a change at Imbizo Barracks. And during that change, uh, General Anselm Senator was forced to explain why they're making so many changes. So I'm going to go out of that change, that video, and then I'll be back in the evening if something big happens. Then our guys are going to be live. We've got a partnership with JCTV Africa where they broadcast on our channel during the day. So please support these videos from JCTV Africa. And as I said, we are planning to construct our head office in Zimbabwe, the Gambako head office. And please join the Gambako membership. You can go to YouTube and you see a button to join. Help us and support us on a monthly basis so that we can produce more news for you. Gambako Media is going to be the biggest media house in Zimbabwe. And the plan that we've got is to stop this nonsense that we're seeing right now in Zimbabwe, where we are in this prehistoric era. Uh, Adam Nangamba and the Zanubi of guys, they've brought us to our knees as a nation. Uh, there is no one who does not know that Zimbabwe could have done much better. So let's make it better. We are the young people who are able to do this and do not be afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. Adam Nangamba, we are not scared of those guys, and I am not scared of Nangagwa. I don't lose sleep about Nangagwa and his people. You must not lose sleep, because where we are going now is a massive change that is coming, and it's going to come very, very soon. Thank you very much, everyone, and a good day he is to you. standard practice in the Zimbabwe National Army for commanders to be moved from one appointment to the other in line with the overall staff requirements obtaining in the Zimbabwe National Army. This system of